Hello, this is Kent Holland. Thanks for joining me for Working on Purpose. This will be the third part of our course. Uh, the first two were time and goals. This part is the purpose section. Setting purpose, finding purpose if you will, creating mission. And I hope that you've already taken parts one and two because they certainly build into this final part of Working on Purpose. This is what it's all about. So uh, I hope that you'll enjoy our presentation today. Uh, this, of course, is based on the book that I wrote, Working on Purpose, and uh, I encourage you to go ahead and obtain a copy. It's very inexpensive. I hope you'll find it well worth the read, and uh, I'll put up the information uh, showing you the book cover and the contact information for me and how to get the book. When we look at um, purpose, we start with looking really, I think, at the big questions. And um, these are ones that I think we probably have all asked ourselves at one time in our lives. It's very natural. We ask things like, why are we here? What are we doing with our lives? Are we really living or are we just on some sort of a treadmill getting nowhere? And do we go through our daily routines just to begin another day, just like the one before it? Do we keep ourselves so busy that we don't have time to reflect on what we're doing and why we're doing it. These are questions that must occur to us as we go through our lives. We get busy, we do get into our routines, and uh, we've got to pay bills, we've got to take care of kids, we've got to get them to the athletic games, uh, we've got to get to work. We just have so much grabbing our time and attention that at some point uh, perhaps you get to the place where I was in my own life where I sort of stopped and said, is this all there is? What am I doing with my life? I thought when I was a young man, uh, when I was in, in high school and college, I had these great grandiose ideas of, of what I was going to do, and, and I hadn't done any of them. I, all I was doing was working. And so in this book and in this course, what I really want to talk about is how can we take another look at our lives, because I think we can do it at any stage in our life, and find purpose and create mission and really get excited about what we're doing. So, starting off, I'm going to refer to a book, Man's Search for Meaning, by Viktor Frankl. And in that wonderful book, he said the following, Everyone has his own specific vocation or mission in life. And everyone must carry out a concrete assignment that demands fulfillment. Therein, he cannot be replaced nor can his life be repeated. Thus, everyone's task is as unique as his specific opportunity to implement it. That's a powerful statement. We all have a purpose. It's unique to us. Only we can fulfill it. We can't be replaced. And our life can't be repeated by anyone else. We are a unique living being. There's never going to be another you or another me, no one just like us. And so our task is as unique as we are. And our task is as unique as the opportunities that we have to implement it. This is what he's saying. When I started looking at purpose, I realized, uh, doing a study of, uh, of uh, many individuals, talking to a lot of people, uh, meeting with different groups, reading a lot of different materials, going to courses, um, I realized that it kind of distills down to some really very specific points. And one of those is that purpose creates a destination. Just as when we talked about goals, we said that you have to have goals in order to reach a destination, in order to accomplish all that we can. Well, so with purpose, it creates a huge destination for us. It gives us meaning and direction. Purpose guides us and leads us. And until we know our purpose, we can't really know whether our work and our projects are the ones that are most appropriate for us. And as we focus on our purpose, our actions will more consistently work together to accomplish that purpose. Really, when we keep an eye on a future vision, 
it becomes easier to see the present possibilities that are going to get us closer to making that vision into a reality. In this course and in my book, I, I use some terms that I probably should take a moment just to explain because uh, I think probably the words purpose and vision might sound interchangeable the way I'm using them, but really I think of purpose as being broader than vision. Purpose is what we feel called to do, and vision is how we see ourselves accomplishing that purpose. It's also how we see the world looking if we've accomplished our purpose. Mission is what we do to turn our vision into reality. Before we embark on our mission, it's very important to first establish our broader purpose. Now, if you haven't already established purpose and written a mission statement, don't despair. Uh, you're not alone in that. I think probably a fairly small percentage of the overall population actually takes the time to seriously reflect on their specific purpose and to actually put into writing uh, a purpose statement or a mission statement, which is what I'm going to be asking you to do at the end of this course. To get to the point where we can do that, I think it's very useful to sit down and look at what we've learned in the previous two classes or courses on times, time setting and goals. So we can look at our goals and this may tell us something about ourselves, about what our purpose is, what's truly important to us. So, what I'm suggesting is that you look over your goals and look to see if you see any significant general themes that occur throughout those goals. Write a short statement that describes the most frequent themes that you see coming out of your goals. And as you look over those lists of long-term and short-term goals that you put together, do you see anything that might suggest that you have uh, priorities in one or more particular areas that are more important to you than other areas? And if so, does that perhaps suggest something about a particular purpose or mission that may be motivating you? Before becoming wedded to goals that we've been setting, it is really helpful to first make sure that we know what our purpose is. Uh, beware, that, beware of that purpose so that we can be sure our goals are consistent with our purpose and our purpose is consistent with our goals. You know, we've all got this desire deep within us to find our purpose and to create our mission so we can be all we can be. It's really a desire to, to live life to the fullest and to leave a lasting and positive impact on those within our own circle of influence. It's a desire to be remembered for something worthwhile when we're one day gone. And when we talk about purpose, I just mentioned the idea that, well, before we get too far along on our goals, we ought to make sure that they're consistent with our purpose. And the way I have uh, of looking at this is as a continuous loop, a continuum to managing purpose, goals, and time. And I'm going to put up a slide here that shows time goes to goals, goes down to purpose, goes back over to goals, which goes back up to time. And what I'm showing here is that as, as we look at our time, we see that we can get some goals from that. And as we look at our goals, we might drop down and say, well, here, these are some overriding goals that show me some purpose. And then from purpose, I can now set more goals consistent with that purpose. And now I can manage my time consistent with my goals. And it just keeps going around and around like this. But if at any point I see that um, my, my goals aren't getting me closer to this great objective of meeting this mission statement, this purpose, then I need to look at that and say, well, I need to change my goals because my, my goals just aren't getting me to that purpose. Or perhaps it's my time. My time management's not getting me to accomplish my goals. 
and therefore I need to change how I'm using my time so that my time gets me to my goals, gets me to my purpose. But there's the other possibility. Maybe things have changed and that purpose was not really my purpose at all or maybe I've changed my mind and that's not how I want to spend the next several years of my life accomplishing that specific purpose so it's my opportunity to bring them all together to be consistent to be harmonious so that if my purpose has changed then I need to go back and change the goals and the time accordingly it all needs to match up so I find this to be a great tool just to sort of manage uh, this whole process until we know our purpose we can't know whether our work and our projects are those that are most appropriate to us. That's one point. Unless we understand our purpose, we might accomplish a lot of goals and a lot of activities, only to later learn that uh, they didn't really bring us any closer to our desired destination. When we focus on our purpose, it's easier to recognize which people and which activities are most consistent with fulfilling our purposes. If your purpose is to be a father, for example, or a mother who leads their son or daughter to develop strong character and achieve their full potential, how are your actions showing that? Uh, if that's your purpose, are you honoring your children by giving them the time and attention that uh, they need and that you thought you were going to give to them? You don't want to look back and berate yourself at some point in the future because you spent so much time at the office or did so much busy work and activities that you didn't give sufficient time to the kid. So I look back on the early childhood years and I wish I'd given them more time instead of devoting so much of my time and energy to my career. Uh, I wish I could go back. Um, and take all those extra hours that I spent with employers that have long since forgotten about me and about my long hours. And in fact, they themselves have long since moved on to other companies because, after all, most people don't really stay with their same company uh, for a lifetime anymore. So you think that you're, 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 you're somehow winning points, you're doing this great thing for your company, and you've spent all these years, and then one day they unceremoniously say, sorry, but we don't need you anymore. Well that can happen and it's uh, it's sad when it happens to us and then we look back and wish that we hadn't given that employer all those hours. The key is do a great job for your employer but keep in balance so that you're spending the time with your family your children as well. So how do we find our purpose? Uh, I like to call it listening to the call and when we begin to feel a sense of purpose tugging at us that's when we need to get into action consistent with that purpose. This takes some time, it takes some patience in sorting out possibilities and different courses of action. Many different ideas are going to present themselves and we have to make decisions to get into action. Uh, we can't just sort of sit and wait for our ship to come in. We've, we've got to get going. We've got to sort of get moving so that we can be steered. We can't just sit lethargically waiting for the voice to tell us go out and do this. It, it just doesn't seem to work that way. Well, we make decisions, we get into action, but sometimes our well-intentioned actions aren't going to take us where we wanted to go. They'll be a major detour to our purpose. But we can learn from that and you know, stay open to learn from the mistakes that we make. Experience makes us wiser. You know, let's not give up. Let's look for the silver linings. We choose service and we reap the resulting benefits of that service. Now, the more we use our time and abilities to serve others and to live for more than our own sensual gratification, the more we're going to experience peace and satisfaction. You know the words, we reap what we sow, and it's more blessed to give than to receive? Those aren't mere platitudes. Those are words of wisdom. 
We feel worthwhile and good about ourselves when we are serving others. Selfish living, in contrast, really causes something inside of us to die. We lose faith in ourselves. We lose faith in others. We, therefore, have an actual need to serve others. Otherwise, we're just not going to be joyful. So, how we fulfill our purpose really determines the extent to which we will feel satisfied with ourselves. What we're doing becomes increasingly meaningful to us when we're serving others. We're going to experience greater enthusiasm when we determine our purpose, and we're going to bring our time and energy into line with that purpose. When that happens, our enthusiasm carries over into every aspect of our life. The good feelings we get from fulfilling our purpose lifts our spirits, it brightens our attitude, and it strengthens our relationships. All these benefits are ours when we experience the joy of fulfilling our purpose. Are we willing to invest what it takes? When we set goals consistent with our specific purpose and mission, we're more driven to persevere to accomplish both our goals and our mission. We're going to find creative ways to navigate past roadblocks and barriers. It just happens because we're, we're motivated. We've got to get there. We'll figure out a way to get around the roadblock. Some of the greatest success stories involve individuals who overcame great obstacles to achieve their success. People who are successful in accomplishing their purpose, they know what they want to do. They plan how they're going to do it. They consider the costs and the rewards of pursuing those goals. And they accept the cost and they proceed to plan and to act accordingly. This multi-step process takes us from an idea to a finished project. And this can be expressed as a continuum. And I'm going to put up a slide that shows this. But it, it goes something like this. You have an idea. That takes you to purpose. That takes you to vision, because you're visualizing, fulfilling that purpose. That takes you to mission, to set that mission to accomplish the purpose that you visualized. And then that takes you to schedule, which takes you to construction, or completion of the project. And I use construction. I'm a construction lawyer, so I tend to think in terms of project schedules. I'm going to go through all of this, and at the end of the, the job, I'm going to see a beautiful new project completed. We take that little chart that I put up on the slide, and we apply it so that we get from, you know, the far left side all the way across, all the whole continuum until finished, com uh, completed project. We are going to be uh, working on purpose. We're going to be satisfied. We will accomplish the purpose we set out to achieve. I've put together a, a list of questions that I think will help to answer or get us closer to finding our purpose. So I'm going to put up a slide and the uh, questions you'll, you'll see on the slide are the following. What gets me excited or enthusiastic? What matters to me the most? What do I enjoy doing? Or what do I enjoy doing the most? What would I most enjoy doing if money and time were not an issue? What have been some of the best or happiest times for me during the, the last year, during the last three years, and during my life? And what have I done that I feel has been my most meaningful and significant contribution? What talents and skills do I have that enable me to offer the most service to others? If I've ever felt that I had some greater purpose to serve, but rationalized it away, and rationalized away taking any action along those lines, what was this greater purpose that I thought about achieving? And what do I feel I've missed out on in my life that prevents me from feeling completely fulfilled. And finally, what do I most want to be remembered for being and for doing? 
if you will answer those questions and then look at your answers and think about those over several days, maybe even weeks, just look at those and think about the questions and your answers, I feel that that's going to get you closer to recognizing what is motivating you, what is a purpose driving you, finding your purpose, if you will. Now, I want to talk a little bit about uh, this concept of um, being a jack of all trades versus striving to the, be the best at what you're best at and perhaps letting uh, some of the weaker activities go to the side. Greatness occurs when we focus our strengths and become geniuses and experts in our specific areas of strength. By identifying our natural gifts and talents and working to strengthen those, we may become great. Great companies became great by divesting their weaker product lines and services and focusing on their top few areas. This has been really explored, analyzed, and explained in the book called Good to Great by Jim Collins. Individuals can reap the same benefits of corporations in achieving excellence by focusing their energy on their unique abilities instead of spreading themselves too thin. Now, instead of spending time and energy trying to improve on areas of weaknesses, I spend more time on my areas of strength. And, you know, I'm never going to be a, a master of certain areas, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's been said if we spend all of our time working on our weaknesses, by the end of our lives, we will have a lot of very strong weaknesses, but we will feel just as deficient and with ourselves when we are old as we were when we were young. And that was by Dan Sullivan in his book, The Great Crossover. Well, think of it. If, if you need heart surgery, you don't go to a general practitioner for your heart surgery, you go to a heart surgeon. If you've got a brain aneurysm, you, you want a brain surgeon. Um, we want a specialist that takes care of the special problems like ours. Our unique ability is what we have to offer. We can make the greatest difference when we dedicate our best efforts in line with our unique ability. Let's stop there for this particular video and we will continue uh, on Module 6 to finish up the course Working on Purpose. I will leave you now with some slides showing the exercises that we've used so far in this particular module and also it will include the module um, exercises for the final video as well. So I look forward to having you join with me again for the final video, Module 6, to wrap up this course working on purpose. So I'm going to leave you now with my contact information uh, and again I encourage you go ahead and just buy the, uh, the book on Amazon.com if you haven't already. It's very inexpensive working on purpose. It has all of the exercises in it. You can carry it with you. It's only about 144 pages. It's uh, a, a really easy read and I think that you'll enjoy it. Well thank you for being with me. I really appreciate uh, the time that you've spent uh, watching this video and uh, I, I trust that uh, you will find the exercises that are going to follow. I'm just going to put them here at the end and you can uh, uh, look at each one um, and write them down if you will or you can buy the book but I really encourage you in order for this course to really have impact it's really important to use the exercises that I have created for you. Thank you so much I look forward to having you join me for additional workshops in the future. Thanks. Goodbye.